Uh, this book reviews on Western birds by the Peterson Field Guides by Roger Torrey Peterson. It's a third edition put out by the National Audubon Society. Hooton Mifflin Company. Uh, it was put out in 1990. Well, anyway, so the uh, guide covers all the birds west of the Mississippi all the way out to California and goes straight up to Alaska. So if you think you can get a bird book with all the birds out there uh, it's in one guy in one book, that's going to be hard to find. It's one of the reasons why I bought this one. It's basically a field guide for people that are professional guides or people that are just actually doing research. So it's you might see this at one of the college campuses. I don't know if they're using these or not, but it's a pretty it's a pretty thorough book on all the, the birds out there. They usually uh, it's divided up into voice and range. It tell you what you're listening to besides a picture, you get a color picture of it, but you're also getting uh, what its range is. And that tells you where they migrate. That's important too, because if you're doing tours and stuff, you don't want to send people out to a uh, area of the country when they're not going to be out there. So you know these kind of books can go with you, and you don't, you know you want to make sure that the birds are going to be out there if you're doing a tour, or you're just uh, on a vacation. You know a lot of people buy these for vacation, and you know. Um, have to have a good set of uh, uh, binoculars. I got these at a garage sale, you know, to strap them on like so. And don't, you know, you got your binoculars and you got your uh, bird guide with you, and so you're ready to go. You know, it doesn't take a whole lot. And then, basic survival gear I have a uh, plastic raincoat. You can stick one in your pocket and you get them at the dollar store. They're just little plastic. Uh, raincoat that you can just stick in your pocket and then have some kind of food. It's important to be able to keep the rain off you because you can get hypothermia depending on how fast the water is is flowing from I, I almost died of hypothermia when it, in, in July and it was 90 degrees outside but a heavy storm came up and I was on my motorcycle and it just the constant water I was out actually taking a driving test for my motorcycle license and just within about 15 minutes a heavy downpour and the uh, officer that was doing the uh, thing said hey you, you know this is fine you know, I could see I was breathing real heavy and stuff let's go back in and you pass but you know I was already going into hypothermia it was already 90 degrees but it depends on how much rain is pouring down on you and stripping uh, heat off your body. So don't think because it's 90 degrees outside that you don't have to worry about hypothermia. And when you're doing going up in the mountains and stuff, you want to make sure that you just have at least a plastic rain poncho that'll keep the rain off you. This book's got a this one's got color pictures. And here's the Here's it's all divided up into duck-like birds, seabirds, long-legged wading birds, fowl-like birds, birds of prey, non-passerine land birds, passerine birds, accidentals. Accidentals are a new, are a product of uh, crossbreeding uh, through natural selection. They're birds that have become a separate species that were came over to uh, North America that and they're all over the world. You know, there's, it, they, there's enough of a species created that you get accident, a, a whole new uh, breed of birds. Uh, if you go to Miami, you'll see green parakeets out there. You start out with a lot of different colors and stuff, but they, they get, enough of them get loose and they start interbreeding and stuff and you end up with just a green parakeet. You also have the California parrot, which is also an accidental. It's now declared as it's just called the, uh, it's a state, state bird, even though it's a, a product of import and the cause. So, you'll, there's different parts of the world where you'll see them out. 
there, but they weren't originally out there. And you also uh, see the range. There's a uh, there's loons. These are kind of gray birds. Gravies. Gravies kind of look like wood ducks. You'll see those out there in the uh, lakes sometimes if you're lucky. They come out during the, uh, usually uh, around 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock. Some of your birds, here's loons in flight. You know, maybe you'll just see one in flying. And maybe that's all you'll see. You'll, if, if some are scared, skittish, skittish if you come out to them, some aren't. You know, I've gotten up close to uh, uh, regular uh, wild ducks just with a camera, digital camera, and actually taking a picture of them. And I've used some of that. There's a duck picture on one of my uh, uh, book reviews I took, and that's how close I was able to get to the duck. If you approach them right and don't look like you're going to attack them, you can get pretty good pictures of them. Here's marsh ducks. They're kind of, you'll see them all over the country. There's your, there's your wild duck, you'll see them a lot. I used to raise wild ducks in a, when I was a kid, we, we used to raise them, that was something the state uh, would uh, put out there, and you could you get them as um, baby ducks, and you raise them in your uh, bathtub, and then when they got old enough, you uh, turn them back over to the uh, game warden, and then next year, he would give you another bunch of baby ducks, you raise them, it's, it was kind of fun because you could raise them in the bathtub, watch them swim around and stuff. And when they got to be adults, you know, you keep them in a box. And then when they got to be, a, you know, about well, so big, then you could turn them back over the game warden, and uh, they would uh, put them out some uh, field someplace. So it was one way of uh, taking, you know, getting to raise ducks without having to keep them around all the time, especially when you don't have a pond. We didn't have a pond. So we didn't, uh, we didn't uh, uh, want to keep them out there because we didn't have any pond. If you have a pond and you turn them loose in a pond, they will return. They, uh, they, you know, especially if you're feeding them grain and stuff out there. So any kind of wild duck will return if you put them out there as uh, younger ducks. They're sea ducks. They're kind of a black blackish looking duck. There's bay ducks. You'll see them around, probably around Portland, Oregon. This part of some of those that come from. Alaska, Canada, yeah, those are mostly northern birds. Mostly Canada and Alaska. So you go up there, up there the uh, and the uh, Canada and up there you'll probably see a lot of these. Here's a miscellaneous waterfowl. Um, they're associated with Asia for some reason, and they've actually uh, ended up in Canada and Alaska. It doesn't give any explanation of how they got out there, but it does show you what areas of the what areas of the uh, Alaska and stuff you would find them in. There's an albatross. They've had problems with albatrosses because planes do crash into them, and also condors. Condors are the largest bird in North America, and it's they've had them crash through uh, pilots' shields and kill the pilot, knock him unconscious, and cause a uh, plane to crash or whatever. It's a huge bird, but when you're going at supersonic speed and that that uh, bird comes flying through the windshield, it's pretty uh, pretty bad. Here's your seagulls, here's the pelicans.
seagulls you don't aren't really I would classify as western birds because you'll see them on the east coast they're in the gulf and sometimes you see them inland you know I've seen them out a flock of them out in a cornfield I was like what are they doing out there you know when they migrate they uh, they do migrate together so if you're lucky you happen to live in that in a migration route sometimes you will just see them out there in a the cornfield or something eating uh, corn after it's been uh, harvested out there if you're in a migration route which is it's kind of unusual most of the gulls are white and black there's kind of a brownish gull I've seen them up in New England but you'll see those up in Portland now California, also in California, Portland, Oregon, I would say up in Oregon and Washington, but also in California. These are kind of neat birds, Alaskan shorebirds, they got real long beaks and real long spiny legs. They're kind of like egrets, where the part of the country where I live at. Um, but you get long, real long legs. They're kind of neat. You'll see them up in Alaska, Australia. They migrate to Africa and Australia. So these birds don't stay in the country. They have long migration routes. They're kind of brownish looking. A lot of birds, 65% of the bird population looks brown. You know, you only get about the other 45% is actually, or 30% is actually real colorful birds. Most of them are either gray or brown. You know, they're, uh, it's hard to see. Wild turkeys do exist out there, but you'll rarely, I've very rarely ever seen one. If you, the only people that ever see them, usually if they're not hunting for, uh, pheasants or whatever, sometimes you can run into wild turkeys, but they don't stay close to general populations. They live out there in the wild and you don't see them very often. You won't see them very, uh, I've seen grouses. They kind of hover together. So you got vultures in here. I mean, this is a bird book. It's not the most attractive birding around, but it's, it is listed in here. So you're getting a full bird book. Not all the attractive birds, just some birds that are you'll come across out there. Here's a different barn house. Woodpeckers. Not a whole lot of variation of woodpeckers. Nope, they got some, uh, there's some colored wood woodpeckers. I don't see them very often, areas of the country I, I've been in. Now those you see in winter is in Mexico and they come up here to British Columbia, California, so Alaska is listed, Baja California. Probably the reason why I haven't seen them, I looked in Alaska and Canada. So if you don't live in Alaska and Canada, you won't, you know, your chances of seeing these colorful wood factors probably are pretty slim. There's a bird everybody sees all the time, the robins. They're pretty, pretty uh, thorough out there. Now toward the back, you get into uh, range maps. That's on the last on a, the last chapter. And it gives you a range map, all the birds classifications up here. And it gives you a range, what time of the year. So this is pretty. This bird, this book is pretty thorough and showing you where all their ranges are at. So you, it's pretty important. I put a star by it to know what type of, time of the year you're going to have those birds out there because you don't want to put a tour group or you don't want to be on, uh, if you're looking to take pictures of birds, you don't want to go to a certain part of the country when they're not going to be out there. So it's pretty important to know the range. 
Well, that does it for this book.